is Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to day 21 of my 2022 holiday card series. Today I'm going to be making a card using Vaughn Fawn's Would You Be Mine? So I've stamped those images out on Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black Ink and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. So I already did a version with these beavers colored in dark browns so I wanted to show you guys a different way to do them. So today I'm going to go with some lighter browns I'm using E30, E31, and E33 for their bodies starting with the E33 to lay in some shadows and doing that on the left side of the body for this little guy with just a tiny bit on the right since he is tilted more toward the right and then blending out with that E31 and then I'll come in with that E30 to fill in the rest of his body taking that down over his belly and the lower part of his face and then I wanted to increase that saturation, so I am going to do a second layer. And lately during the holiday card series, to save you guys some time, I have been doing that second layer off screen, but I recently had a request to leave it in the video. So today I went ahead and showed what that looked like. Just increases that depth and saturation and also smooths out your blend. So I'm going to do the second beaver colored exactly the same, except I'm flipping the shadows. This one is definitely facing toward the left. I like to keep the highlight on the face, so the shadows are going to go down the right-hand side. So I do typically leave the second layer in my videos, especially if I don't have a ton of images to do. Just during the holiday card series, I was trying to do things a little bit faster for you guys because I know your time is precious, especially at that time of year, and I just didn't want to waste too much of it. So if you would like to see more videos where I show both layers of coloring since I often do that second layer, leave me a comment down below and let me know. But also you can go back and watch some of my videos that were before the holiday series and most likely I did leave it in unless there were a ton of images to color. So I'm moving on to the tail and again I wanted to do a different color palette than I've done before so I went with E21 E23 and E25 and I am drawing attention to the waffle shape in the tail there and adding a little texture to it by outlining each of those little individual squares. So I do that first with the E25 just doing like a little L shape and then once I have that E25 laid in I will do the same thing with the E23 just saving most of the room for the highlight there so I can fill in with the E21 and that really does give it some fun texture. So while I have those shades out, I'll use the darkest two to do the noses, the E25 blended out with the E23 and then I wanted to give these guys some rosy cheeks so I'm using RV10 and RV11 for that. Just a little RV11 first and then blending that out with the RV10 to soften that up into the rest of the fur. Then I'm going to do the wood using some E50s. I'm going to run the gamut here from E50 all the way down to E57 so that I can do both the bark and the cut part. So I'm using E50, E51, E53, E55, and E57 using the E57 for the darkest and adding a little shadow down at the base of each of these little logs and then blending that out with the E55. Then I'll grab the E53 and fill in all the rest of the bark. So it's just the darkest three shades on the outer part of those logs. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to just add a little touch of that E53 at the very base of the cut part. And then I'll blend that out with the E51 and then use the E50 at the very top. I'm also going to do the twigs to match. So I'm going back to my E57 and adding some shading in there. Just using the very tip of my marker so I can stay in those tiny little lines. 
and then I'll fill in the rest with the E55. So those just get the darkest two shades, so they'll look a little bit different. And then once the logs, the cut part has dried, I'm gonna go back and add in some wood detail with the E53. This is an extra step you don't have to do, and I'm probably not always gonna do, but it was a fun little step to add some extra texture there. Then for the grasses, I wanted to go with kind of like a, a cooler pastel green. So I decided to go with YG41 and YG45. And this is to pull in some colors that I'll be adding later on with the ink blending. But I just laid in a little of the YG45 first and then blended out with the YG41. And that was both on the grass and all of the leaves. And then to add a little extra dimension, I went back in with the YG45 and just added a touch uh, extra of that to deepen those shadows. Then I'll grab a black Sakura Jelly Roll pen and get that started off to the side. And I'll go over the eyes of my beaver that has his eyes open. And then I will trim these images out with their matching dies. Next, I wanted to create a little home for these beavers, so I'm going to use the new Build a Cabin dies. I'm going to die cut the main cabin out of some craft cardstock. All of these cardstocks are from Lawn Fawn. I'm just taping the dies into place using some post-it tape. I'm also cutting the chimney out of the craft and the extra little piece for the chimney and then the little uh, hanger for the sign. And then I'm gonna do the roof and the door trim and the window trim out of sage leaf cardstock. And then I have a tiny little piece of ballet slippers cardstock that I'm going to cut the little heart out of. So you could use either the heart or the kind of longer sign, but I decided to go with the heart for today's card. And I'm going to trim all of those out. Then I'm going to move on to my background. I'm using some Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock. And I want to create kind of like a, a sun, sunrise scene here or a sunset, whichever you want it to be. So I'm starting with some Kitsch Flamingo up at the top and blending that from the top corners and then coming down the sides a little bit. So it's almost like a rainbow shape, you know, kind of like a upside down U shape. And then I'm going to bring in Squeeze Lemonade for my next shade. I'm going to carry that up right underneath the Kitsch Flamingo and then overlap into it just a little bit. And it's not going to look great at first, that's okay, um, because I'm blending colors that aren't really next to each other on the color wheel, I do have to work back over, go back to that Kitsch Flamingo and blend back over a few times. And that's fine. Um, Distress Oxides are meant to be blended again and again to get that perfect look. So I went back to my Squeeze Lemonade and then I'm going to move on to some Evergreen Bow. Now this one I only wanted just a tiny little bit of it to show. So most of the Evergreen Bow you won't even see in the final card. I just wanted it to like be below the horizon line, like almost like the, the glow of the snow. Um, so I kept it really low and then um, made sure that I blended over with my squeeze lemonade once again to kind of make sure that it was just barely there. And then I wanted to distress this a bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is spritz on some clean water and I'm going to add that to an acrylic block first so that I have more control and then pick that up with a paintbrush and just flick it off the edge until I have little droplets everywhere. And then I'll let that soak into the cardstock for a few seconds and blot that up with a paper towel. Then to distress that even further and add a little bit of shimmer, I'm going to use some Gansai Tambi Starry Colors. I'm gonna use the pearl sheen. So I just added some water to that and mixed it up until it was flowing nicely. And then I'll dip my paintbrush in there and flick that all over the background. So that'll be some little stars on the sky. I'll set that aside to dry and move on to my snow. 
and I trimmed out those using the stitched hillside borders from Lawn Fawn. I have two different ones. And I'm going to add some evergreen bow to the top edge of these as well, just because the, the green is going to match the rest of the, the coloring and the, the die cuts. So I just am using what's left on that ink blending tool so I don't get too much of it. I just want that really soft glow on there. So next I'm going to bring in my die cuts and I want to just add a little bit of Distress Ink to those as well to give them a little bit of extra shading. So I'm using the Evergreen Bow on the pieces that I die cut using the Sage Leaf. And it's not a ton, like I said, just a little bit here and there just to add a little extra dimension to those pieces so they don't look quite so flat. And I'm just trying to be really careful with them so that I don't bend anything because some of these are fairly delicate. I also cut a piece of sticky note cardstock out. I just cut it with my paper trimmer. This is going to go behind the cabin so it will look like the windows and doors are lit up. So I use my squeeze lemonade for that. And then for the pink pieces. I'm going to use the Kitsch Flamingo on top of the ballet slippers. I did cut a second part of the cabin out of the ballet slippers as well so that I could just cut out the door. And then I also have that tiny little heart that I want to add just a bit of shading to that as well. And then I'll set that aside and move on to my craft pieces. And for those, I'm going to bring in gathered twigs. So the main piece is going to be the cabin. I want to bring in that color on the outside edges so that the, um, the logs kind of have a little bit of weathering to them. And then I'll also bring that down over the roof. Even though the roof is going to be covered up, I want to bring that color down so we have a little bit of shadow under the roof. And then at the bottom as well. And then I'm also going to add some shading to the chimney and also that little, um, I forget what that piece is called, but it goes over the chimney and to the little hanger. And once I have all of those pieces colored up, I'm going to go ahead and assemble the cabin. So I'm just going to pop out all of the windows first. Make sure that that door is opening nicely and kind of fold that back on the crease line. And then I'm going to take that piece of uh, sticky note cardstock and add that behind the door and the windows. So we get that little bit of a glow from the inside as if somebody has the lights on. Then I'll take that bottom part of the cabin that I die cut out of the ballet slippers and I'm going to fold back that door as well so I know exactly where to trim that out. And I'll just use my Cutter B Teflon coated scissors to cut that. And then I'm going to glue that right over top of the craft colored door so that we have a nice little pop of something unusual. I thought it'd be fun to do a pink door. I don't see pink doors very often. And I kind of liked the color palette of this soft pink with the sage green and the craft and then that little bit of yellow. So I'm going to take that sage green door frame and add that over top of the door. Just settling that down into place. And I really like using this Barely Art Precision craft glue for all of these little die cuts because some of them are super fine but they're still easy to glue down. Just like these little window trim pieces. They're so small but that glue fits right behind there. So I'm going to add those over the windows. So we have that nice little bit of trim that goes around and matches the door frame. So once those are on, I'm going to take the chimney and just make sure which side of the house I want it on. And I'll add a little bit of glue to the bottom of that and just tuck that behind. And I'm going to add some more detail to that in a minute. But first I'm going to add the top part of the chimney and I did make sure to pounce a little extra color on that to give it a little more depth so it's darker. And then I 
did the same thing for that little string. So I'm going to get some glue on the heart and some glue on that little string and then I'll put that up right under the roof line and add that heart just hanging down over top. A little fun extra detail and you could definitely stamp something inside that heart if you wanted to but I didn't for this card. So my last little piece is the roof so I'll hear that right over top of the craft colored one. Make sure that everything is pressed into place. And then I'm going to grab my background and my two snowdrifts and adhere those down. So I'm taking the taller one first and just lining that up with the bottom of the card. And then I'll add the smaller one over top. Just making sure that everything is going to fit how I want it. And then I'm going to take that cabin and I'm going to glue that down over on the left hand side of the card. So just adding some liquid glue behind that, making sure that there's enough on there that that will be secure. And I'm going to add that to the top of the lower snow drift. Then I'll take that whole panel and pop it into my Misty and stamp my sentiment. I'm using one from Merry Messages that says Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So I needed to have that cabin on there to make sure that I would get my spacing right for that sentiment. And it stamped out pretty good the first time, so I'm just going to take that out and then I'm going to pop in a card base, which is more uh, Ballet Slippers cardstock, and I'm stamping in bubblegum ink. And this time I'm doing the little beaver couple with the heart and the sentiment is also from Merry Messages which says sending joy for the holidays. And now I am ready to start putting this card together, the final little pieces, starting with gluing the background to the front of the card. So it is going to be a perfect fit. It is four and a quarter tall by five and a half wide. So it'll fill that entire card front and I'll press that down into place and then bring in my images. I'm going to start with the beaver that is standing up because I wanted this one to be coming out of the cabin, kind of half in and half out of that door. So I'm just kind of getting the placement right and then I'll tuck this one inside. And I think that looks so cute, kind of just coming out to uh, see how the other one is coming along. So this one is going to be outside kind of gathering wood for their fire that they've got going on inside for their little holiday celebration. So I'm going to take a few of these little um, logs and kind of figure out how I want them placed here and there. I want to make like a little wood pile and uh, have some of the twigs poking out. So I'm just kind of figuring out how I want that pile to look. And then once I'm happy with it, I will work from the back forward and just kind of pick them up and tuck them back into the little pile there. Just adding some liquid glue behind and then making sure they're all kind of turned in a different way so they look you know, a little bit more natural. And then, like I said, I'm going to take some of these twigs and just tuck them in between. So they've got their logs and their kindling all ready to go, which of course you wouldn't want to use kindling that has leaves on it. But anyway, um, I guess they'll take those off before they start the fire. I'm going to take one of those twigs and add it to the beaver that is inside the cabin, put it in her hands because thought it would be nice to give her something to hold. And then the grasses, I'm just going to tuck behind the other beaver to kind of fill in that empty space over there since that snowdrift goes so much higher. It just felt like it needed something. And then it also felt like it needed something over on the left side in front of the cabin. So I used the last little twig over there. And then I wanted to add just a little bit of more detail to 
the chimney to make it stand out. It didn't look like it was really made of stone. So I'm going back to some of the Copic colors that I used earlier and just adding some texture to those bricks using E55 and then E57, just dotting them in and uh, making them look a bit more like stone. And then of course I wanted to add some stardust stickles. So I'm gonna coat that heart with it. First I only did part of it, but then I decided to just do the whole thing. And then I'm also gonna add just a tiny bit of stickles to the leaves on each of these little twigs so that you just get little flashes of it here and there. And then I also added it to the top of the snowdrift to give that a little bit of a shimmer as well. So you have that beautiful fresh fallen snow look. And that is going to finish up this card and my holiday card series for this year. This is my final card for the 2022 holiday card series, you guys. So I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. Make sure that you're subscribed and that you have your notification bell rung so that you are alerted whenever I post a new video. I still have a few more coming this year and plenty of new content coming into the new year. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you'd like to continue, here is day 21 of the previous two years of holiday card series. And I have playlists going back to the very beginning. So there's tons and tons of holiday videos if you're still in the mood for some more. All the products used are listed down below. And thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.